Welcome everyone to Coach University's webinar. Today's webinar is about our LLM programs and we're very lucky to have uh, a question and answer session with some of our current students and alumni from our LLM program in public law and private law. As we wait for everyone to join the webinar, uh, we just want to please, uh, first of all, say thank you for joining. We know that you're joining from very different time zones, not only, of course, in Turkey, but also from uh, countries in Europe, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia. So thank you so much for joining us today. First of all, I would like to um, introduce our LLM student panelists. They are three brilliant students that we're very, very proud of. Um, first is uh, Faith Pepela Mumia. She's an LLM public law student here at Koch University who started in the spring of 2019 in the LLM in public law program. She's now in the second year of uh, the LLM and she's now writing her dissertation or, or thesis. I also uh, want to welcome our second LLM student panelist, Behie Gökçeli. Behie is an LLM, also public law with DC student here. She's from Turkey and she's also in her second year of the program and also writing her dissertation. We will have time to learn more about those dissertations and what they have been working on so far. She also completed her um, bachelor's in law at Koch University with a minor in international relations. And last but not least, uh, we also have Ege Oba, Meltem Ege Oba, who is uh, one of our LLM alumni in private law. Uh, she graduated from the LLM in private law with thesis program in 2018, so two years now. And she's now completing her PhD in private law at Koch University. So we're very also, we're lucky to have her to look at her experience of going from the LLM program to a PhD degree after graduation. I'm going to just very briefly give an introduction about our LLM programs for those of you who might be new to Coach University and to our law school. The reason we're here today is that we want more talented students from Turkey and from around the world to know more about our programs and hopefully, you know, take the step to expand their future and uh, join the cohort of students that every year joins our LLM programs. The reason why we think they're a, an excellent choice for lawyers in Turkey and abroad, first of all, the most important reason is our faculty members. They are internationally renowned. They're dedicated to training a new generation of lawyers. And you can feel that passion and that spirit in the classes. And of course, our students you know, might share more insights into this a bit later. The curriculum is also important, so we offer a wide curriculum that covers the most demanding, but also the less discussed comparative and international topics of different legal disciplines. We offer all of this, you know, the curriculum and the faculty members in a very international environment, both in terms of the graduate students who are coming from um, various different countries, but also in terms of the international collaboration and experience and activities that are done by the law school from which the LLM students can benefit, benefit from. Um, as I mentioned, the academic collaboration is an important part of that. And another um, kind of practical aspects of this uh, LLM programs in private and public law are first the modular format, which is done on a part-time basis um, and also of course, that it's offered in English. This is a very big advantage for those of you who want to uh, continue or expand your careers in an international arena, then this is a big advantage. Last is the affordable tuition and financial aid opportunities. For today, we're going to be focusing on making sure that you ask all of your questions from our panelists about their experience as students. But next week, we will have dedicated webinars for each of the programs, one for the LLM in public law and one for the LLM in private law. We will have faculty members there who will give sample lectures and we will also cover information about this uh, more practical aspects about admission, tuition, financial aid, deadlines and everything else. And of course, you can find all of this information in our website, which we, we will show at the end of today's webinar. So. To get started for you know why the reason why we're all here today 
is to ask questions from our student panelists. One thing that I will kindly ask in terms of housekeeping to make sure this runs smooth, smoothly is if you please type your question on the Q&A section of your screen, not on the chat box, because it's harder for us to follow and be able to read the questions on the chat. Um, please also type one question at a time so that we can go um, you know, and answer them or they can answer them one at a time. Um, if you're from Turkey and you wish to ask some questions in Turkish, that's okay. We will, you know, our panelists uh, will answer them and then we will provide a brief summary in English. So with that, I would kindly like to ask our three um, panelists to open their cameras and their microphones. Let's, uh, let's do that. And then to also uh, briefly introduce yourselves, I will please, uh, I first want to ask Behie to start. Uh, thank you for your invitation again, and uh, thank you for uh, your participation as well. Hello, I'm Behie, and I completed uh, my LLB at Scotch University. I'm currently working as a lawyer at the same time while continue at, uh, at the study of my LLM year. And I'm writing a thesis uh, on the freedom of expression and the investigative journalism, especially with the focus of international uh, case law. So that's all about me and- okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your introduction. Now I'm going to ask uh, Faith to please introduce herself. Hi everyone. My name is Faith Bepela Mumia, as you've seen. I'm a public law student. I'm from Kenya, so I'm an international student. I'm currently doing my LLM in public law. My focus is on international criminal law, and my thesis is on the viability of an African criminal court as an alternative to the International Criminal Court with a STEM focus on African solutions to African problems. I'm very happy to be here. Feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Faith, for your introduction. And now I'm going to ask uh, Eje to please introduce herself. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Eje. Uh, I'm also uh, a Koch University graduate. Uh, I've obtained my both LLB degrees and uh, LLM degrees from uh, Koch University. Uh, as you can see from the screen, it, uh, it's now back in 2018 that I obtained my degree uh, from the LLM program. But I'm also now currently pursuing my PhD degree in private law, and I'm also working as a research assistant now at uh, the law faculty of Koch University. Okay, thank you very much. So um, I also forgot, and I apologize to introduce that uh, here in our in our webinar we have Ms. Esra Ozjan, who is the executive director of our law school, and Ms. Tuche Zatana, who is the academic director of the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. Please correct me if I'm saying any titles wrong here, I might have. Um, but we are also very lucky to have uh, them with us because uh, if we have any uh, more practical sort of admission related questions, we can uh, allocate some time at the end of the webinar, as I mentioned, and they will be the, the best people to answer those questions. So I would kindly ask participants to now start typing your questions. Um, we can, you know, we can start in the with the session in, in this way. So we see there's more people still joining us right now. If people are a bit, you know, uh, shy to type. I, I have a lot of questions actually for you <laughs> that maybe uh, we might get uh, things going in this way. Uh, one thing that I'm always curious when I meet uh, both Turkish and international students is why, why you chose to come to coach, you know, like tell, tell us your journey. So I would I ask um, Behie to maybe start. Um, for sure. Uh, to be honest, my main focus was the collaboration of the comparative and international student international studies of law at the same time. It's the one of the main features of the, the, our LLM programs, and it's also um, it, its program is also allows us to uh, 
combined with the working life and studying life at the same time, it's another uh, advantage for me because uh, I was also doing my legal internship and I was trying to complete my legal internship period at the same time. So uh, also, I can also add that I would like to further pursuing the PhD career uh, in the future. So and working in a working in a non governmental organization at the same time, maybe. So it also allows uh, these these opportunities with this network. And I also really like the combining my uh, thesis with the, this, uh, you know, with this opportunity. I, um, so it's basically, uh, it allows us to learn different legal disciplines based on the different, different you know, multidimensional perspectives. So it's the, my main reason for studying uh, coach. Okay, thank you. Um, would Faith like to, you know, share her reasons for why, you know, from, from Kenya to Turkey? So a long way. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we're having some technical difficulties right now. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I'm back as having a bit of a technical hitch, but it's fine now. Um, as an international student, my main concern was integration. I wanted um, an environment that felt like home, away from home, but also a curriculum that um, fused with the one that I'd already had. My, I, I had an LLB from Kenya, and it was important to me that I gel in straight away with the program. So it was um, fortunate for me that Turkey is a common law system just like Kenya. So the LLM program aligned, but also being a person with an academia background and uh, one who is very interested in policy development and research, it was important to me that I be in a pro program that is very much research oriented, very much um, stemmed and rooted in um, research. And I found that the public law LLM is exactly that. It's not all, of, um, we're not just ticking off um, topics in a box, we are going in depth we're researching, we're finding out, we're producing new information. We're not just regurgitating whatever is in the syllabus. We ourselves as students are provoked to think out of the box, to create new solutions. And that was important to me. Also the fact that it was a public law program, which means I was not being restricted to just um, my majoring in one thing. The public law program enabled me to venture into various topics that I was very passionate in. I, I was able to do labor law, but also at the same time get expertise in international criminal law. I'm learning human rights law. On the other hand, I'm also gaining expertise in constitutional law. That was very important to me because at this stage, right after your LLB, you know what you want to do, but you also don't want to stifle your options. And becoming to an umbrella program like the public law LLM allows you to specialize in these programs as you now develop research and find out what you're exactly passionate about enough to make an informed decision as you go into either academia or as you go into uh, private practice out there. So that was very key for me and I found that the program really worked well. Sorry, a very thorough research that you did um, for choosing the program is, is what I can see. Um, can I please now ask Edge to share with us your reasons for joining Coach University and our LLM program? Uh, sure, thanks uh, a lot. I totally agree with my friends. Uh, just following up from what Faith uh, has said, I totally agree on the fact that uh, at Coach University you're given a chance uh, of pursuing an LLM degree where you're given a variety of different uh, options, especially in choosing which courses you want to complete in uh, completing your LLM degree. Uh, I think that makes a huge difference. Uh, but my actual reason why I decided to study at Koch University was uh, obviously the academic environment. It offers you a very rich, uh, academically uh, motiva motivated environment. Uh, you have uh, the most distinguished professors to work with. Uh, also, 
the program is all in English. So that also offers you an international understanding of each topic. So it does not uh, only focus on Turkish law, even if it's a program in Turkey, we get to see the comparative aspects of almost any topic that we worked on. Uh, I think that's uh, a very important point to be able to uh, become either a competitive practitioner or an academic. Uh, so those were my reasons, basically. Thank you very much, Eddie. Um, we have a question here. I will start and then I will ask my colleagues Ezra and Tucha to read the next uh, relevant question. So uh, I will rephrase it slightly. So it's the question about the thesis. You know, is it worth doing an LLM with thesis versus a non-thesis LLM? And maybe you can share how you came about the the decision to do a thesis master. Some of you have already explained that, for example, you want to continue to a PhD, uh, but if there were any other considerations that you had when you were um, applying for the program and choosing to do a thesis um, LLM, and do you think, is it worth it? I guess that the main question here from our participant is, is it worth it? You can be very honest. I know there's very difficult times in the process of writing a thesis. So. <laughs> So I will ask Behia to start. Um, for sure, actually, uh, with I, as I said before, uh, my main focus was studying PhD, continue PhD education. So actually, the uh, main reason was the choosing choosing LLM program with thesis was the PhD purposes. However, when you when I um, look at the general. Uh, general background of me i just thought that it's i have to focus on one topic and i have to uh, study further on that and I actually especially freedom of expression was the main concerns in turkey so it was the main area that i wanted to uh, work so it's the reason why i actually choose the thesis uh, one thesis, thesis. Okay, how about uh, faith? Is it worth doing a thesis? I think I'd encourage um, anyone who wants to join this program to consider doing the thesis program. I know the, the other option might uh, be shorter, but as lawyers, we are in an environment where we are constantly, we need to come up with solutions. So if you're going to court, you need to research your case brief, you need to come up with your submissions, if you're in academia or in policy development, same thing, you need to be able to uh, be flexible in terms of research and but really build up on that skill because it's your ability to argue your case, whether in court or ability to argue your case in a paper, that's gonna make you stand out. So I, it's a, a worthwhile experience in terms of learning in depth how to do your research, but also the alternative is not is not um, something that is, is a bad option, of course, to each their own. But um, if you're oriented, if you're very much into research or you have your career prospects are along a field that requires research, I'd encourage you to opt for the thesis program. But if you feel like you're more practical, you thrive more in the practice areas, you thrive more in court, you thrive more in areas that don't necessarily need you to be at the back of the desk doing desktop research then maybe consider your options along those lines. But definitely research is something that you cannot go wrong with as a lawyer. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that's absolutely true. It's a skill that you need to develop. It's like, like a muscle you have to exercise uh, your whole life as a, as a career, as a lawyer. It's, it's what I'm, it's what I keep hearing. <laughs> Now I'm going to ask Ejen to please uh, share her, her thoughts on this. Uh, I think I would agree with my friends. Uh, I agree on the fact that if you want to, or if you have a plan of becoming an academic, uh, I would definitely encourage uh, the applicants to apply to the program with thesis. But for instance, I have lawyer, I have friends who are lawyers who just wanted to get some more in-depth knowledge on certain advanced topics and uh, for instance in commercial law or in some other aspects of law uh, where they just didn't want to go into details of writing a thesis but they wanted to learn about the subject so they rather wanted a taught master's program uh, 
Uh, so they were very happy with the non-thesis program as well. Uh, I think it really depends on um, what you need uh, in your career and also what you want to do, maybe. I would, thank you so much. I would have a follow-up uh, in terms of, are you happy with your thesis <laughs> so far? Um, so we know it's a labor of, of love that takes many months and, you know, most people say it's worth it at the end. Um, it's, it's also, um, yeah. And if, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I would definitely say it's worth it. Uh, I totally enjoyed it very much. I understand, I agree uh, on the idea that it sometimes feels burdensome, uh, but when you find a topic that you actually enjoy, that you actually feel uh, curious about, even if the workload is sometimes heavy, in the end, it just makes you really so proud of the work you've done. Also, it opens up new um, questions in your mind. Uh, you want to maybe do something else afterwards, like pursuing a PhD, or uh, it gives you an expertise on an area uh, that's also good because uh, later when you apply for a job, for instance, if you have a thesis on a certain subject, that means you have an in-depth knowledge on that. Uh, I've written my thesis on uh, the temporary protection regime under the um, uh, international protection law. So it sounds like a public uh, law topic, but uh, it's, I also tried to find ways uh, about how um, refugee law intersects with private international law. Uh, so I totally enjoyed it. I would normally definitely um, encourage everyone to write a thesis. But as I said, if you're a total practitioner, maybe uh, it's also good to have a non-thesis program. Great. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, we have another question here. During the LLM, are students allowed to make some data? I guess you're referring to collecting um, data to complete the research for the thesis. And, and I will kind of expand on that question. Um, you know, what, what, let's say, what opportunities, tools, support you feel you have received or you received in order to collect data for your research, for your dissertations, for your thesis? And how was that process? If I will start um, with Bea. Yeah. yeah, actually it's a continuing process for me. So I'm still trying to get data and uh, I'm still researching and reading something. However, uh, when actually um, look at the right, when you look at the general right thesis writing period, yes, the Koch University Library is uh, open. Although you do not have any access to physical opportunities, however, the online uh, library opportunities are open to us right now. So we are collecting data via uh, online resources all the time. And also, uh, we are engaging with our professors as well. Uh, and to be honest, it is all of them involved uh, much our thesis period. So I can always ask questions to my professors. So it's a great opportunity uh, for me as well. It's uh, so here is that the, there is an intense professor-student engagement as well as the uh, deep seminars and a lot of learning opportunities at the same time with the seminars as well. So no issues with the data. Okay. That's, that's, even, even during these well, last year's um, special situations in terms of, I guess, access to, you know, our physical campus, but I guess, you know, it was okay. Like wasn't a major um, obstacle. What about you, uh, Faith? Like uh, in terms of collecting data, what has been your experience? Have you been able to like? Oh, thank you. Um, in terms of my experience, first we have to appreciate that um, during this time we've been having a public health crisis, this coronavirus. So there's very limited movement and physical interaction. But due to this, um, uh, we have a very, very well prepared library. We had access to ebooks. Um, the school went out of its way to uh, get on board a lot of ebooks that enabled us to do our research, even though we were not physically present in the library, and also set up links where you could um, ask for some of the literature to be scanned and sent to you so that you can go through it if you're not, not able to access it physically. Like if there's only a physical book present for it and there's no ebook, 
you could you scan and send and you would get part of it to use it but also we have a digital repository we have access to so many online journals and um, papers that you can use to do your research so you have Heinolein, you have JSTOR, you have Cambridge, you have Oxford so many alternatives that you can explore right now to use but as we also as a department very privileged to be working with uh, staff that is constantly researching and so as their supervisors we are privileged to be the first to receive their published papers the first to receive books that they have also bought books that they have access to because as other researchers and because they also partner with other institutions they have access to other books but also the good thing about our university and something that is worth applauding is the fact that if there is the book you're looking for to do your research or the paper or the resource you're looking for is not in our library they have a relationship and a working relationship with other libraries around and the librarians there can then access the book for you and get it for you on board use it and then you you send it back so it's definitely in coach you it's an environment that is very prepared for the a student who loves research a student who is doing their research so if you're worried about or if you're thinking about um, doing your your thesis then either way whether you're doing it online or you're going physically to the school just know that you're very well covered my experience has been very good especially since i had to i'm kenyan i had to travel back to my country uh, when the pandemic started and I have had very minimal interactions in my time. I've had very smooth transition when it comes to resources. Thank you very much. And AJ, how about your experience? And I guess you're now in a different level in terms of now doing research for a PhD. So. Um, I would again uh, be agreeing with my friends uh, and Faith has very well, very uh, comprehensively summarized the situation. I think uh, the Koch University Library is just available all the time when you need uh, information because in law, uh, it's great to have empirical research, but in most cases we use books and uh, to be able to conduct our research. So um, the library in that case and the databases that the school is um, subscribed to uh, helped me uh, to a great to the greatest extent uh, there hasn't been any time where uh, i tried to reach uh, a source and couldn't find it because as our friends have stated if uh, the book is not physically available at that time the staff would definitely help you find it from maybe some other library or they have connections and um, especially i written my thesis back when uh, there was no COVID, obviously but nowadays i still continue to conduct research and the online um, services and sources are uh, very suitable still. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm leaving some questions that we're seeing on the question and answer part, uh, which are more related to admissions. As I said, for those of you who might have joined us a bit later, we're going to uh, find some time to answer those at the end of the webinar. We'll allocate five, seven minutes for that. There was a question on the chat part, and again, I remind you to please not write questions on the chat part, part but on the Q&A part, um, which is about, uh, you know, working at the same time as you're doing the LLM. And I think Behie is an example of, of that. So I would like her especially to please share her experience. Like, what are the, you know, uh, how has it been combining work and study? And maybe for Ed and, and Faith, if during your LLM, were you able to uh, do an internship or work uh, part time? How did you feel it was? Was it easy or difficult uh, if you wanted to work? If you can share your thoughts and, you know, uh, about that. So I will start with Bey. Um, actually, uh, working at the same time uh, is it's not easy, not that easy, however, uh, uh, I, I should say that that the LLM uh, program allows us allow me to work at the same time with its actually uh, course hours. I mean, it's it has a modular program, so you have only courses on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, and uh, so you can basically I I can have basically had work with. I can work uh, on Monday to Thursday, and I can go to to course on uh, Fridays, 
and Saturdays as well. Uh, during COVID period, it was online, so it was much easier to uh, attend courses when you look at the physical uh, sources. So, um, I mean, it's uh, our LLM program to me was a good opportunity to uh, good opportunity to. Uh, I think you muted yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay. So sorry for this inconvenience. Okay. So sorry. So it the the program actually supported me during. Uh, working period as a practitioner as well. Uh, uh, I had an opportunity to take courses on Turkish law as well. So it provides me to graduate level knowledge for uh, a, for a, you know, not only pursuing academic career, but also as a practitioner. So uh, I couldn't have a chance to take courses on uh, the commercial law, for example. So uh, it helped me during all the working periods. So I also could then have, could have uh, opportunity to focus on my actual interest area. So uh, it, it was actually good, it good opportunity for me and that's it. I mean. Thank you very much. Uh, what about uh, Faith? Uh, have you tried to work? Are you working? Do you think you will have time? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, during this year and part of last year, I enrolled into a postgraduate diploma in law. So I was doing my LLM concurrently with my postgraduate diploma in law in Kenya. And I have to say the way the program is structured, the way you're able to do your, your thesis with step in step with your supervisor really enables you to have that balance. Because with court, it's not just about um, It's not just about um, being able to write something or research, but you develop a working relationship with your supervisor. So you develop working timelines, you know, when do you meet, when do you not? And there's that flexibility because, because they, uh, they've been there, they've been in your situation. They also have written pieces, they've written papers, they understand the intensity and they're not just interested in your performance. They're also interested in um, you doing well as, a whole human being, being able to develop socially, physically, mentally, but also uh, do well in your LLM. So my experience um, in balancing the two has been that because a uh, coach has supervisors who are very in interested in your, de your wholesome development, they do make arrangements for you to balance the two. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I guess, yeah, so what I will take from your answer is that, again, even if you're doing a thesis, uh, the, you know, the arrangements that you do with your supervisor, uh, of course, if you meet your deadlines, then it should, you know, allow you to, to work if you, if you wanted to, but yeah. How about you, Agent? Uh, what was your experience? Uh, did you work while, whilst you were doing your LLM? Uh, I was working as a research assistant back then as well. Um, and that meant I was uh, assisting the private national law classes, uh, which required me to have one discussion session almost every week or every two weeks. Um, I was assisting basically the uh, research of my professor I'm working with. Um, I, we sometimes had organizations of, uh, for instance, conferences, those kinds of research assistance tasks, basically, which actually kept me quite busy. But I would, I think, again, agree with my friends because it's a balancing exercise. It's never just um, one job that you have to do in life. Uh, if there's not a professional job or a duty, then you would probably have your social life. Uh, so you have to balance those two. And I think you would need some um, self-discipline, I guess. And your advisors would definitely help you do that because especially in an LM degree, uh, yes, you have deadlines for the thesis and uh, your advisor always checks how you're processing. Uh, so as long as you're on track, I think uh, even if it's not very easy, yes, you can work and write a thesis at the same time. And I think it's maybe healthier and better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. There was a question here um, that I'm trying to interpret, which is how many courses do I need to take to qualify for a specialism? 
Um, and I'm thinking the question it's about, for example, when you were choosing which electives uh, you wanted to take besides the core courses of the LLM, uh, how did you choose those courses? I mean, were you looking to specialize in a specific um, aspect of law or a specific, uh, you know, I mean, how was your process to select electives, for example, where you, you know, was part of your goals to specialize in this, you know, in the LLM program? And I will ask, start with Behi. Sure. Um, when you enrolled uh, in the LLM program, you have to take four core courses from your own, own track. Uh, so I had an opportunity to take the comparative constitutional law course and European human rights uh, law course, uh, transnational and European criminal law course, and the public and private partnership uh, course from the public law. And also I tried to combine these public law courses with the private law courses. So I had an opportunity to take the uh, course uh, on the joint stock corporations, World Trade Organization, where we meet, meet with Faith and the public and private uh, courses. So uh, I choose these courses uh, mainly because I had an opportunity to combine with uh, international studies with the Turkish law once. So uh, I also uh, wanted to research and different legal disciplines. I mean, I also, as, as I said before, I completed my uh, LLB at Koch University as well. So I had an opportunity to extend my uh, studies during the LLM. So these were the ones that I uh, wanted to choose as electives as well. So, uh, okay. So you, you did a combination. So you said, even though it's a public law program, uh, you know, you want to, uh, you know, get exposure to uh, private law topics as well. Okay. Yes, as practitioner. Yeah. So great. Okay. What about you, Faith? How was your uh, process for, you know, uh, selecting courses and uh, First, thankfully, so um, the faculty is very approachable and also the administrative side of the faculty. I had the pleasure of working and really bothering Esra. I don't say bothering, but I was in her office constantly just to get more information on the units. And that's the beauty about this program. If you have any questions, it's an open door policy within the faculty. If you need more information on an, an elective, if you're not quite sure about how to go about it, if you're not sure about the language barrier, it's an open door policy you can always walk into Esther's office or a professor's office and just ask to have a conversation about it and get to know more about it so for my electives um i chose things that were in line with public law that i passionate about i ended up doing the international labor law investment treaty and arbitration wto of world trade organization law and international transport law so to me, this were more aligned with my passions at the time. It's areas that I had a keen interest in, especially since they aligned with the most of the challenges that we, I, we face in our continent and my country. So I wanted to learn more so that I could uh, conceptual, conceptualize solutions to them. But also as an international student, I know coming in, you might be a bit more guarded. You're not sure of the language. You're not sure of how the two areas will gel in because of what you've learned in your jurisdiction and what's being taught in Turkey. But I just want to assure you that it's very in step, even with the core courses, we're talking international criminal law, uh, human rights law. I, as an international student, came in a bit apprehensive because I wasn't sure if we would be learning the same things we learned. Because for law students, of course, you'll understand that um, African regional law is a bit uh, different from e EU regional law. But it was very easy for me to, to come in. It was very easy for me to understand the professors take their time. As I said, there's an open door policy. So as you choose your electives, you're very free to explore find out there's so much information about it before you make the decision. Estra's door is always open and any other administrative assistant who's there. And of course, you also have the pleasure of interacting with 
PhD students, some of them like Meltem who've already gone before you. So you get to ask, you get to find out, and that's the beauty, it's one big family where resources are being shared down. There's a lot of generosity with information, so you get to understand uh, what you're getting into before you actually do it. So that was the principle I used. I asked the administrative assistants. I also got an opportunity to talk to some of my professors, such as Professor John Yensu, before I took international uh, investment treaty and arbitration. But I also consulted some of the students who'd gone ahead of me, such as Hoitzim, Molimo Mutlokwa, who's one of the PhD students, Irina, Elida. Um, and it was uh, uh, the whole situation helped me understand what to pick and what not to pick. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you have touched on a very important point, which is the sense of community in our in our law school, because it's it's not a massive law school of thousands and thousands of students. We're just you know you're one in the crowd. But I think uh, what I have heard so far is that you really get to know each other, not only your your professors but also your classmates and people who have gone through the program before. So um, that's I think that's that's also important for uh, prospective students to know. So thank you for for sharing that, Faith. Um, uh, AJ, would you like to share your, you know, your electives or kind of specialism focus? I think you were looking at human rights and also like uh, mm -hmm. refugee type issues, but was that part of your criteria? Um, yes, but and no at the same yeah. time. Uh, so basically, when I first started doing my LLM, I thought I would be just focusing on the private law issues. Uh, so the topics that I picked were more like international uh, European contract law, international dispute settlement, especially commercial arbitration, for instance. Uh, as our friends said, there's investment arbitration, which is again kind of a hybrid area, but um, I picked global competition law, the company law classes, there are two uh, each year, I think, available. Uh, but the more I got into know uh, private law, I also realized I'm also curious about uh, public law issues. Uh, so when writing my thesis, I was free to choose the topic that I wanted to work on, obviously given the fact that it had to be related to private law. Uh, so as long as you find an angle that is related to the area you're working at during LLM, uh, you're um, independently choosing which topic you want to write your thesis on. Uh, but further during my PhD studies, again, even though I was pursuing, I'm pursuing right now my private uh, PhD degree, I, for instance, had the chance to take a uh, European um, human rights course, which was so interesting because I realized I didn't have enough uh, knowledge in that area, but I was curious about it for comparative law reasons. Uh, so as our friends said, it's a really, um, the students are given a lot of chances to be able to create their own programs. Uh, and I think that really makes uh, our law uh, program stand out uh, against the other programs. Uh, so it really depends on what the student wants in that sense. Of course, we have, I think, three um, mandatory courses, but except for that, the rest of the classes are uh, based on what the student picks. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, you have touched on another point, which also defines not only our LLM program, but the university as a whole, which is uh, the principle of, of freedom, you know, of really allowing students to explore, um, you know, all of their curiosity, you know, and being able to take elective courses, not only from the college or the graduate school that they're in. Uh, if some students, for example, wish to pursue electives in, in a different graduate school or, or associated with a different graduate school, uh, I think some students have done that before. Um, I'm not sure, maybe Ezra can comment briefly. Do you know of any students uh, from the LLM program, for example, who ha have taken courses, elective courses from other graduate schools or, or within GSSSH from the Graduate School of Social Sciences? Uh, yes. They want to kind of enhance their knowledge in, a, in a deep, an area outside of law. Of course, uh, there are many students who are interested in most international relations or economics, for example. They're all under the umbrella of the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Truce. She is very helpful on this. She provides the courses to all our students, which they're offering in each semester. So even under both under the Graduate School of Social Sciences and also if they are interested in a very unique topic, uh, they can choose uh, elective classes from different departments. It could be even from the engineering department if the student, if the professor uh, uh, consent to accept a, a, an LLM student from law degree. So uh, it is very um, open. So they are as long as you 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 just tell us what you want, what you really want to focus on for your research, and if it is relevant to you, 
uh, we provide all courses to you and uh, we communicate with the professors and, and it is very easy to take elective classes from different departments. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to read a question now that we actually received via email before today's webinar, uh, which I thought was very, very interesting. Um, so first I will ask our Turkish uh, student uh, panelists to answer and then later Faith, because I'll, I'll rephrase it. So uh, the question was related to uh, why did you choose to do your LLM in Turkey? Uh, did you ever consider doing your LLM abroad, for example, in the States or you know, Europe or somewhere else? Um, what, you know, how did you make that decision? Or what factors you know, uh, played into that decision? So if I can start with Behi. Um, for sure. Uh, actually, uh, I choose studying in Turkey because the Turkey is a case study in public law area. So, it, and, uh, you know, uh, as, as, a, as a Turk citizen, actually, I know the social and economic and cultural background as here. So it's a uh, sort of opportunity for me to write thesis, uh, especially. However, uh, I, of course, I could, I might apply for another uh, LLM in abroad, and I might choose and studying abroad. But uh, to be honest, uh, the Koç University is one of the best universities at, in Turkey, and it's also uh, recognized by recognized in Europe and uh, USA as well. So uh, it's not that it was not that issue for me to choose and going abroad. So. Uh, I had an opportunity to, especially, uh, I, I had an opportunity to study at Koch University once I wanted to look at its program and its uh, opportunities in the social and the, so in the social area and networking area as well. So it was my actually first choice to apply. So it's basically why I'm studying in Turkey and at Koch at the same time. Thank you. What about you, Eje? Did you uh, consider, you know, going abroad for your studies? I, uh, well, I did. But at first, when I finished uh, my LLB degree, I felt like I should be uh, learning a little bit more on Turkish law. I felt like, yes, I had a great education, but there were some other questions in my mind. I want to uh, dig a little bit uh, deeper in certain issues. Actually, after completing my LLM, I had a better, a more comprehensive understanding of uh, law in general, private law in general. And as I said, it also, Koch University also, because it teaches law in English mostly, um, helps you learn the English jargon in law and also how to draft uh, texts in the legal context. Uh, it helps you and it gives you a great experience in that regard. So that's why when I first finished law school, I thought I would be continuing. Um, I wanted to continue, but then I also pursued a second master's actually before my PhD. Uh, that was also because I wanted to see the um, foreign experience. So pursuing one LLM does not always uh, mean that you lose the chance of having uh, the chance of going abroad. Also, I didn't use this opportunity, but if you're studying, for instance, uh, at Koch University, you also have the Erasmus programs available to you, uh, which is also great, I think, because sometimes um, it's not so easy to find the funding or the application process might take time and you might not be in the right time to do that and miss that uh, time, for instance. But while studying at Koch University, you might still visit uh, certain institutions uh, and conduct research. So I think that's a very uh, important and um, good opportunity to use. Mm -hmm. that, that's true. Um, and I don't know to what extent our LLM students use that opportunity, uh, but yeah, it, it, it is there. So Turkey does benefit from being a program country of the Erasmus Plus program. So it means that students uh, can receive financial support to um, go abroad, either a semester or a shorter period to, to, to partner universities within Europe and now also outside of Europe as well through specific agreements. Yeah, and also Pepela, have you done Erasmus Exchange, right? Erasmus Exchange response yeah. in Spain. Yes, I actually did my Erasmus internship in Madrid last year, uh, 2018 rather, and it was a very, very good experience for me. 
Did you learn some Spanish? Um, <laughs> Very little, okay. but I did little, eat a lot of Spanish food. So <laughs> I guess I learned <laughs> both ways, but I got to interact also with, and that's the additional thing. I learned a little bit of Spanish national law. I, inter I got to understand how institutions there work. So it doesn't just limit you just because you didn't go to take the LLM in Spain doesn't mean that when you come to court, you will be limited in that area. Erasmus allows you to go to a number of countries. You can go to the UK, you can go to Denmark, Luxembourg, a number of countries. So yeah, court really opens up that for you. Great. So, and then the, the question that I had asked our two previous uh, panelists, I will ask you, but a bit differently. So, um, you know, when you were considering to do your, you know, if let's say you had made up your mind that you wanted to do an LLM program outside of Kenya, uh, in that process of choosing which country to do it in, how, I mean, tell us a bit more about your decision making kind of process. Like, um, I think for international students, maybe just to speak from maybe the perspective of uh, international students coming from the African region. Mm -hmm. First, there's, um, there's a whole lot of factors that you have to consider, but top of the list is of course costs. Mm -hmm. And I find that studying in Istanbul is cheaper compared to many other European cities. Of course, um, comparatively, you'll find Istanbul cheaper. That's not to mean that also that it's the cheapest, but I find almost during my time in Istanbul, the rates have almost been the same as my country and actually for some things <laughs> actually been cheaper my living experience in istanbul has almost been incomparable with living my country it's been very comfortable to study and live in istanbul so there's the question of costs of course it was relatively uh, cheaper than in any other european city but then there's also the question of um, the area of law which you started with or the area of law that um, the branch of law that your country practices in. So most students um, will, they're from a civil law jurisdiction, they'll tend to lean more into jurisdictions that also have civil law. So in this, in my, Kenya is a common law system, Turkey common law system. So it was very easy for me to, to choose Turkey because of that synergy in the areas because I knew then it would be easy for me to blend into the program. Then there's also the issue of language. I wanted, I didn't want to go to a place where I would have to automatically learn a new language in order to start. A research is already bulky enough as it is. You want a program that creates ease of research for you. And Coach LLM um, also having English, the English programs running for international students is definitely a plus. So if you're an international student coming from a country and another country and probably don't know how to, you can't yet speak Turkish, but you're looking for to learn, um, it's a worthwhile experience. The programs are also uh, taught in English and the many electives that are in English, it will be a completely um, smooth transition for you coming from that other country to Turkey. Then there's the issue of ranking, coach ranks competitively compared to most universities. And even if you look at its ranking in Turkey alone, you'll be very surprised. And it's um, a very good thing for a student looking for an LLM program to consider the ranking because you want to be competitive in the field you're getting into. And that really helped because Coach had a competitive ranking. It was, it was very easy for me to choose to come and study in Coach. And then the other additional programs that we've spoken about, like Erasmus uh, research programs, um, we have various research centers within the city of law. So it allows you not only to learn just in class, but also to take part actively in activities. And you get to tour Istanbul, you get to do a number of activities. So to me, that was important. Also the social gelling aspect you get so that you're not just a student full time that can get a bit boring or it can get a bit uh, desocializing but uh, a program that allows you to fuse both is definitely something you can look into and I found that coach did that for me. So it was easy for me to accept coach. That's, that's great to hear. Um, and yeah, and of course, you know, living in Istanbul, it's a big plus um, for all international students. Uh, that's, we always hear that that's one of the, the big reasons of living in this huge, beautiful, uh, chaotic city, but it is above all beautiful. So it's, you know, and affordable. So yeah, <laughs> true. So we have now about uh, six minutes left. Um, there have been some questions as well, uh, re more related to admissions and to um, 
scholarships. So now I'm going to ask that we take uh, these five last last five minutes um, for Esra and Tuche to maybe provide some brief answers to those. But as I said, we will have uh, more information about this in our upcoming webinars. And you can also find the information in the program website. I'm going to now show that very quickly here. Okay. So um, this is how you can keep in touch with us after today. There was a question about what, what happens after this uh, webinar, after this meeting. Uh, hopefully you keep in touch with us uh, through one of these uh, you know, channels that we have here, either by email, check in our website. We also have a presence on social media where you can you know, see more information about the LLM program and other programs from, the, from Coach University. So um, I will ask uh, maybe Tuche to start from the questions that we had before related to admissions. Yes, and I will also ask uh, Esther to help me in answering them as uh, she would be better to elaborate some of the questions that I grouped together. So uh, one of them is the language that, that the language criteria. So a couple of students asked if they don't have an English uh, score, if they don't have a sufficient English, would they be eligible? So the, there's two answers to this. One is English uh, requirement is, is one of our, our medium of instruction is English, so you have to have the necessary English level to proceed on to the program. But if you have the English and you don't have the score due to COVID restrictions right now, not being able to take the exam, you are, uh, are, you are given the option to uh, apply conditionally without uh, your score and then to provide us with the score after you start your study. So, that uh, you do need the score, you do need to have a certain level of English, but you can apply conditionally without having uh, your test score, test exam on hand at this point. So uh, the, the second question that I took note is coming uh, from a different background, I think. Uh, there was a student asking about coming from a mass media and crime background and if that they would be eligible to apply. So maybe Esther, you can better- um, Yeah answer this question and why they need to have a legal background in law to be able to so, yeah you know the all programs in turkey are administered by turkish higher education council so the, uh, regarding the regulations so we have recently had this uh, point that uh, we all students following llm should have an llb degree therefore for the last three years we are not able to admit students from different backgrounds so if you hold a different bachelor degree other than law, you're, you cannot apply to the program. Um, therefore, you need to have an LLB degree as a bachelor and then apply for an LLM program. This is the law, so we need to apply. Um, and then another question I took a note is, of course, the scholarship options and the availability of scholarships. Uh, so this is, as uh, we have informed you, uh, and it's available on our website, this is a, a professional degree and it's a fee-based program. Uh, depending on your um, merit, uh, there may be and your course, your uh, written exam, and also your interview results and uh, the decision of the jury, there may be some partial scholarships available, but we don't have a certain number of scholarships or we don't, we just, uh, distribute, distribute them upon the merit basis of the student. So if a student is exceptionally higher than the other students, comparison with the jury, you know, to, uh, to their peers, yes, of course, they're given the option to have a scholarship. Uh, it is limited. Uh, and Esra, maybe you would like to add on to that decision-making process. Yeah, this, the decision is, first, we shortlist the candidates when they make the application in the system, depending on their the, the criteria. If you hold, hold all these criteria, then you're admitted, you're invited to a written exam and uh, an interview. First, you will have, an, or uh, like for international students from the bigger beginning, we always have the interviews and written exams online, regardless of COVID situation. So if you're coming from a different country, you don't have to uh, be present in Turkey to attend the interviews and written exams. So everything is online. So you, we are, you're you invited for an interview with a committee in the field that you're applying for. If you're applying for a public law, 
program. There is a committee for, from and professors, distinguished professors from the public law program. And also if you're applying for private law, then the professors from pri private law department will evaluate you. In the, during the interview, both academic questions and personal questions are asked. So you, you should ex uh, you expect uh, questions regarding international cases and they evaluate your educational background and they evaluate your um, academic background as well to how you approach to those cases and how you answer those case, uh, questions. And after the interview, there is a written exam. Uh, it's mostly an, a case, uh, case written ex an academic essay. There is a case that you, you receive and Pepala can also answer that question, how you experienced the written exam and how you did that. Uh, so that it's an application. So maybe Pepala could answer as a student who did it this. What do you think, Pepala? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty straightforward process, which is good for any international or just local applicant applying. Uh, basically, what you just do, just go to the website, get all your documents ready. That will make it easier for you to apply. But also in terms of the interview, it's not an interview that is designed to probably give you anxiety or one that will erect. It's not too intense, if I can put it that way but it's one that is already designed to draw answers from you because you already know these things. So the interview question, the personal interview questions are just about to get to know you as an applicant. Is this, a, are you the right fit for the institution? And is also the institution the right fit for you? When it comes to the written interview, you're being quizzed on your understanding of the law, but also they're not expecting, um, should I say like PhD answers from you or like um, complex answers. They just want to gauge your understanding of the law. So it's, um, you will be asked questions almost in line with just how you answered your questions in LLB. Um, it's a normal exam setting. It's not anything that is too out of the understanding you already have from your LLB. It just builds up on it, engages your understanding in the law. So it's definitely um, an interview process that is very user-friendly. Um, the protocol is very direct. You know what to upload, what not to upload. And if there's any mistakes you make during the, the application process, you can always reach out to GSSH. Um, if, of course, all this information is uh, available also on the website. You can also reach out to ESTA and, and just uh, amend. But they, the portal and the application system is very user-friendly, very student-friendly. Thank you. Uh, there is also a, one question about the classes, the hours of classes and how many classes you need to take uh, for the LLM. So we have two tracks, LLM with thesis and non-thesis. If you're following an LLM with thesis program, you're supposed to take seven classes within a year, followed by a thesis dissertation on the second year. And if you're, you're a non-thesis program student, then you're supposed to take 10 classes within the first year and then the, you write a short kind of dissertation which we call it a project paper it's an academic paper it's a very short base of dissertation and with that paper you submit it and then you get your non-thesis degree uh, these are the uh, the class numbers that we are offering and any other questions do you think you um, miss? There was a question here, uh, for example, how many scholarships would you provide each year? What does it include? And I think the answer is there's no fixed number uh, of scholarships. Yeah, Kucha mentioned that we don't have the specific number of scholarships. Uh, there is a question uh, that came in just at the end. And, and uh, does the university have a career office to provide job or training after the LLM for, in, for foreigners to gain experience? The, the university has a career development center uh, where they provide different services to both undergraduate and graduate students. And in that sense, they do have a lot of online resources uh, for things like, for example, preparing your CV, preparing for interviews, how to deal with panel interviews, how to use job uh, search portals. Uh, so that, that's the top type of generalist, let's say, services that they provide also to graduate students, including LLM students. They do also have um, sort of one-to-one -one coaching sessions that they can provide. But I want to ask this question to um, as maybe the last one to our student panelists. Um, you know, like, have you have you used career services uh, during your studies, or what has been your sort of careers um, guidance and support uh, as a student? 
if I can ask, if I start with uh, Bejia. I, I unmute myself right now. Uh, yes, uh, as you mentioned clearly, we have a career center and also we have a great professor that helps us during our whole career periods and ask questions directly. Uh, in the career centers, you might have, you know, ask questions about what are your values, abilities, skills, or what's your, you know, um, what are your strengths and what is the sufficient information to decide your career? So what are your development areas or what are not your development areas? And uh, you might also have an opportunity to follow the future trends as well as like online interviews, etc. Uh, they are uh, trying to help you to understand the needs of the sectors and the uh, your yeah to put forward your uh, skills and abilities on in that regard so i personally take uh, support for example while preparing my cv especially and they were they were just you know skip through their cvs and have directly and also had a uh, mock interview opportunity was the one of the best opportunities for me. Uh, I could have an opportunity to do a mock interview, like I was in a you know mm -hmm. for an interview, etc. So it's Great. a good opportunity. Good. Okay. Uh, what about uh, faith? Have um, you moved the career center or not? Uh, Oh, I have um, the career development center is really an asset worth uh, looking into if you're a coach student or also considering coming here because then you have people who are knowledgeable in the area of um, career development so you they, you get to discuss your career progression things you're interested in and the parts you get to pursue but also you get additional skills so they also help you refine your CV so that you are ready to make that step once the opportunity affords itself. But then we also get frequent emails from um, the career center, so career.atcode.edu.tr that circulates available opportunities to students every now and then. So you're constantly in the loop uh, on available opportunities. But then also the interesting thing is that the school uh, through this uh, career development center has organized sort of like sessional weeks. So there will be a week designated to law students, to engineering, to marketing, and during that time, companies are invited to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with students. So you'll have recruiters, you'll have companies coming to give in information about um, how they work. And during that time, also recruiters come in to speak to students. So in that way, you're learning, but you're also being exposed to the market because then as you attend the seminars, you, um, the Career Development Center is helping you with your CV, but also they're exposing you to the opportunity so that you are ready for them. And once you attend the seminars, you get to know more information about these companies, these working places, and they're specifically designated for um, each faculty well. So it will cover engineering, it will cover law, it will cover every other area. And that way you are getting both the practical and the academia aspect of the LLM. Great, good to know. Yeah, that, it's good that you remember that they do organize this uh, careers in law, for example, uh, sessions where they bring, uh, I think mostly Turkish law firms, but uh, there might be some multi, you know, international law firms that have um, you know, regional offices in Istanbul as well. How about you, Edge? Um, tell us your experience because you've been you know, from your undergrad on, until your PhD at Koç. So. Uh, yes, I I remember as um, as Faith has said, I've attended, for instance, the career uh, days, the events where uh, a lot of law firms were invited to the campus. Uh, but since from the beginning, perhaps because I was inclined to the academic career, uh, I have always taken my professors as my role model models, and uh, I would always ask questions to them, and they'd be very friendly, very um, warmly welcoming those questions. Uh, but I can reassure that I remember uh, most of my friends have actually be able to find internships or full-time jobs uh, based on um, the aid from the career service uh, because there's a very good um, pool of um, 
law firms slash companies where uh, by uploading your CV basically through the Koch University Career Service, uh, you're exposed to all of them uh, in a very easy and inconvenient uh, manner. Uh, we also have the uh, law club. I also want to mention that because mm -hmm. uh, we don't only have the professional events, we also have some academic events as well. We talk to the alumni, we sometimes ask questions to uh, fellow friends. Uh, they also help us. So this community, I guess, helps you to um, have that network. It also, I think, um, connects to the question, the question why you would uh, pursue an LLM here in Turkey, uh, because Istanbul is a very vibrant city. Uh, after you're fin you finish your LLM, especially as an international student, if you're fluent in English or further languages, uh, it would be a very interesting CV, I guess, uh, and there'd be a lot of job opportunities. I think, especially in law. That, that's absolutely true. I mean, I think a CV that has Turkey in it uh, stands out because it's it's not a, a hugely common uh, kind of destination for a lot of international students. So it, you know, it does make you stand out. At least it would raise a question, um, you know, you know, how, how was it there? You know, what did you gain from your experience of living in Turkey and in Istanbul? Um, there is a very quick question that I will answer, which is about our PhD in marketing. Just as a point of information, we will have a webinar from our Graduate School of Business to talk about our PhD in business administration, including the marketing track later in February. So I kindly ask you to visit our website, international.ku.edu.tr, because we put um, all of the information about all of our other program webinars on that site as well. So um, again, I would now like some parting thoughts, reflections, um, you know, messages from our student panelists. And I want to thank them so much because uh, we know that you're writing a thesis, you're working part-time, you know, you have a lot of different obligations and you took the time today to be with us. This is really, really um, a precious time for us to have uh, talked to you. And I hope our participants have also gained some new insights and, um, you know, have new questions in their, in their head about applying to our program. So with that, I want to thank you. And then if uh, maybe I can start with Behia with some final words. Um, thank you for your invitation again. Um, actually, Coach University was the, was the one of was the biggest chance of my life during both LLM and the LLB actually, and I uh, really uh, slept all day. Just okay, I'm at I'm studying at Coach University, and uh, this has been a huge for me, a huge thing for me. So I hope you will we will meet uh, one by one. Uh, Melissa and yeah. to channel as well. So <laughs> I also miss my, you know, friends, Tate, Maltan. We had an opportunity to take courses together as well. So uh, thank you for your invitation again. It was a good, it was so good for me to, you know, attend such a webinar. Thank you. Uh, Faith, any final reflections? Uh, first, thank you for having me here. It was such a good opportunity to get to talk to um, applicants who are interested in the program. And I just wanted to encourage you because I've been in the position where you've been. I've been interested. I've done the research. I've attended the seminars. And I just want to encourage you, if you're considering coach as an option, please don't be scared. Um, the process is pretty much straightforward. Um, just take your time. Do the application and prepare and everything is going to work out. Don't be scared about, also don't be scared about approaching um, the global recruitment team or extra for additional information, but also just to encourage you that um, in coach, we're one big family, especially the coach law faculty. You will be, you won't be joining an, just a purely academic program. You will be making friends. I, as Vahir said, we had an opportunity to have a class with her and Malta and with one big family within it. So um, you will have all, if you're scared about resources or help, or just you will have big brothers and big sisters in the PhD program who will help you with your research. But additionally, you will also have the company of your fellow LLMs who are just young, interested 
hearts and minds um, looking to do an LLM and it's a, a program worth exploring that will really go a long way into your career development. So yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for expressing interest. And I hope I get to see and interact with more of you next year, perhaps if you get admitted. I really look forward to that. If you see me or if you meet me or if you want to say hi through email, I'd definitely love to know that we uh, reached out to more of you. Yeah, so thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faith. Uh, I have to say, Faith, is that it's, you know, I'm so happy to, to have her as one of our students. She's also now the cover of our prospectus. So thank you so much, uh, Faith, for that. And you have said something beautiful. It's, you know, young and interested minds. And that's what makes, I think, our university great, because there's so many of those, you know, uh, people like you guys. Uh, so that's, that's what makes us, uh, you know, the, this makes this job very easy to do, let's say. And finally, Eje, if you would like to share some final thoughts. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words and your invitation. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to be here today. And uh, as my friends have suggested, I would definitely suggest uh, all of the possible uh, future students uh, to definitely consider uh, the Koch University LLM program. Uh, visit the website, um, have a look at the courses, uh, ask questions if they have any, and uh, try to see the opportunities behind it. And um, hopefully, uh, maybe we'll also meet in the future. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. So with that, um, Ezra Tuche, would you like to say some final words before we go? I think, I think you know, our students are amazing. I always like uh, <laughs> talking to our students. So. I would like to thank you everyone for joining and thank our students for this wonderful and informative session and being here with us. And we miss them a lot. So it was great to see them as well. And thank you. And if you have any questions, you can always email us from the uh, links and information pages that are shared on, in the session. Yes, as Pepela said, we are a big family and would like to have you all in this uh, family as well. I'm looking forward to having your applications and having your students here. Thank you. So with that, we're going to say goodbye and good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and hope you have a good weekend. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.